Hi everyone, my name is Byreen Samuels, your tech translator here at The Smart Years. And I just wanted to give you a brief overview about um, a new technology. It may be new, very new to you, those of you who are outside of the world of tech, and it's called blockchain. It's been around for about three or four years, and blockchain actually is a technology that potentially can revolutionize the way that we interact with each other on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, which basically means that we remove the middle man, the middle person, the middle institution in terms of our transactions. Now, why is this? If we think about how the world is going, it's moving in a way whereby people are actively taking control of their lives in a very uh, potent and powerful way. Um, a lot of us as citizens around the world are losing uh, confidence in terms of our governments, uh, the lies that are being um, told, or we're just kind of waking up in a way where we're using our consumerism in a very practical way. Now, with blockchain, what it does, it enables groups of people, groups of individuals from anywhere from around the world who don't know each other, but actually want to transact with each other in a way where you don't have to use a third party intermediary. And that's one of the beauties about blockchain. Blockchain allows you to transact with each other. Um, and, and what happens is, is that this transaction is created on something called a block hence the name blockchain, and then you have a hash, and the hash is the key, it's the code for every transaction, and these transactions are recorded onto what is described as a distributed ledger, and once uh, the transaction has taken place, it then becomes immutable, meaning that once the information is on there, it can't be changed, and that's why there is trust that's built into the system, hence why it's called a, a trust system coming from a trustless environment. Now there are different types of blockchains, so you have public blockchains, that means that anybody in the world, um, we can come together, we can transact, and uh, the transaction, as I said, is noted in a hash and then that forms the key. If you lose the key, then you lose any value that you have attached to that. Then you have permissioned blockchain, and permissioned blockchain is whereby um, you are identifying the different types of roles that people might be able to play out or, or, or carry out, I should say, on the blockchain. So you might have a permission to use the blockchain, but only to a certain extent and then you're locked out of the system. And then there's the private blockchain, and the private blockchain tends to be formed by consortiums uh, or partnerships or groups of people or groups of companies that already know each other. So they tend to be a lot smaller in size, so they could be like five companies who do business together, it could be around a supply chain. They do their business, but they all know each other, and so it's a private blockchain which means that it's only those who are privy to the contracts um, that can actually participate in it. And so blockchain, you may be familiar with this concept about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrencies have been around for, in terms of more prominence over the last maybe six, seven years. Um, and, you know, they kind of created this bubble and the inflation and, you know, the actual uh, economics around uh, cryptocurrency have been quite appealing to a number of people. So cryptocurrency is where one is able to trade um, using non-fiat money. Fiat money is, you know, euros and pounds and dollars and cryptocurrency is a way whereby you can trade. Then there's another version of the blockchain. So cryptocurrency is built within the blockchain. And then the next um, version of blockchain is um, there's a, a system called Ethereum. And Ethereum is a system whereby you can still be trading, but what it has done is that it has built in a programming language, which then means that it enables one to write contracts. Um, the contracts that then bind people within these relationships that's created either on the private, on the public blockchain, it could be on the permissioned blockchain as well as it can be on the private blockchain. So this concept of blockchain is the ability to build trust in trustless environments when you're not part of a consortium. So I wanted to bring you that for today. I'll be bringing you more vignettes about new technology that's emerging and how that might relate to you on your everyday basis. So until then, I will see you soon. Bye.